Not sure if you can hear this, but the PSU of this is making such a weird noise at the moment. Uh, no. And the timeline. To be honest, that's insane how smooth this is. Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. Look at this tiny PC over here. This is called the Zotac Magnus One Mini PC. Create a PC, it's all in one, it's absolutely tiny. I think it's 8.6 litre case, but inside there is a full size RTX 3070. And we've got 32 gigabytes of RAM, and we have an 8 core Intel CPU from 10th generation. It's a 10700 with an iGPU inside as well. But the big question is if you're a creator, how good is it in video editing in Premiere Pro? What codecs can you edit? What resolutions can you edit? Let's find out. Motion Array is a fantastic tool for creators to make better videos and faster. Motion Array has over 80,000 premium quality templates, presets, plugins, music, and sound effects, stock video, and photos. Photos. In a nutshell, it is a one-stop shop for all your video post-production needs. Configure the membership to suit your needs. Pay annually, monthly, cancel anytime you want. And, and enjoy your unlimited downloads. Not sure about Motion Array? Go try out the hundreds of free assets available on the website. Check out Motion Array in the video description below. So I've got like an unboxing and first impressions video on my channel if you want to check that out as well to really, you know, get to know the PC a little bit better. But, um, it's very loud. We're going to have to do something about that, which we're going to get to that in a moment. A few things before we get started. If you want to pick this one out or check it out, I'm going to leave it linked in the description below. We've got version 2022 build. It's 2020.0.0. So the new one, because the new one has an acceleration for H.265, some of those codecs as well. I'm curious to find out if this works also with this PC and the iGPU inside there, because this combination can be very, very, very interesting. So when we're looking at the performance in Premiere, Pro, if you do just the Puget Bench benchmark, it's not going to get the dead impressive scores. As you can see on the screen over there, we're getting actually just like 677 extended score, which isn't that good and standard overall 750 or something like that. But that doesn't tell you the whole story because yes, it might have a weak CPU in order to export the footage and stuff but it actually has a very good playback. So altogether, playback is much more important than exporting times. We are running every single clip full resolution, as you can see on the top corner over here. We have the drop frame indicator over there. We have the latest studio driver of the RTX 3070. So we've got the task manager open here as well, so we can actually see like how the hardware acts with those codecs. So first codec that we have over here, when we go press play, this is full resolution. Uh, 420 8-bit 60 frames per second mirrorless camera footage. Now let's have a look. We've got one frame dropped of this, but as you can see the iGPU is actually playing it back and it's doing quite a good job. This is without uh, the um, color grade and it's doing very 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 good job playing it back. Look how smooth this is. It's smooth as butter. If I press play, it actually isn't dropping any frames. 60 frames per second 4k is such a small little thing. That is absolutely amazing. And as you can see, it is the iGPU that is playing it back. Now, let's put on the color grade as well to um, make it more like a normal, you know, workflow. Let's see how it plays back now. As you can see, the NVIDIA GPU is actually playing back the um, hardware or the actual Lumetri color color grade and the iGPU is uh, decoding the footage. Not sure if you can hear this, but the PSU of this is making such a weird noise at the moment. The like coil wine is the worst I've ever heard on any of the PCs. I'm not sure what's going on over there, but it can easily do that. Let's move on to 10 bit 420. This is H.264 as well, like the previous codec. Well, we've just changed the uh, bit depth. And as you can see, even this one is actually GPU accelerated. So our iGPU is playing it back and doing a very good job. So now I've put the color grade on as well because I wanna see if it can do it with the color grade. Full 4K resolution, no problem playing this back. Let's move on. Now this is H.265 codec and this is 50 frames per second as you can see, 4K, H.265, 420. So this should be actually GPU accelerated as well. We've got a full resolution. Let's press play, let's see what happens. Okay, our iGPU is still playing this back. 
At first the GPU went on a little bit to pray this back, but this is 50 frames per second, so it's quite quite hefty. With the color grade as well, by the way. So our GPU is doing the color grade, our iGPU is decoding the footage, and our CPU is doing, you know, just putting it all together basically. But as you can see, it's very, very smooth. I know 14 frames dropped, but this is uh, this is not bad at all compared to what this is over there. Let's see the timeline performance. This is very, very smooth. With the color grade on, I'm very, very impressed. Now this is 422, 30 frames per second, and this is actually only CPU accelerated codec. As you can see, our CPU now is doing all the work. Uh, our GPU is doing nothing, it's zero. Our iGPU is not decoding or encoding this footage either. But as you can see, this goes all on the G CPU and it's still able to play this back. Oh, it's half the resolution, my bad. Let's put it full resolution. Let's see if we can do that now. 422, it's quite a hefty codec. It's on the CPU, let's see. Not bad, it's able to do it. And the timeline is very, very smooth. To be honest, that's insane how smooth this is. It's all on CPU and it's able to play that back. It's very, very instant. That's amazing. So if you're using Sony A7S III, which this codec is, 10-bit 422, pff, no problem. This is H.264, by the way, because that's very important. H.264 and 5, uh, they're different a little bit. So this is 10-bit 422, 60 frames per second, H.264. So this should now max the CPU out quite a bit with the color grade, and it's still playing it back. Zero frames dropped. I'm very, very impressed. The timeline is a little bit laggy now, just because the 60 frames per second, 422, we're putting a lot of strain on the CPU. But if you're just clicking around, yes, it waits a little bit and then comes, but honestly, it's very similar to like Ryzen 9's full-on desktop CPU. So to be honest, I didn't expect that. I'm impressed. Like I haven't done this test myself before because I wanted to like give my first reaction to as we're testing this together. Now there's another 10-bit 422 H.264 codex over here. This is 25 frames per second, both of them. And this is you often what I found for some reason the hardest codec to play back. Yet it does a pretty good job. The timeline performance is like it, 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 it lagging a little bit, but it's able to do that. And now when we go to the SI codec, which is this one over here, this is much, much smoother, which is basically less compressed, easier to play back all intra codec over here. But let's press play between the clips and let's see how it reacts. As you can see, look how much the CPU was used when it was playing back the more compressed codec. And now with the SI less compressed codec, look how low it is, massive difference. Like double the amount of CPU usage to play back the previous codec, but we're still playing back full resolution, uh, zero frames dropped, so let's move on. So mirrorless cameras, all of them, H.264, H.265, pretty, pretty easy. We've got a bit of R5 later on there as well, but hey, so this is Canon C200 RAW, 60 frames per second, 4K, and ooh la la. Now we are maxing out the CPU. We are not playing this back quite as nicely as before. Yeah, let's put it to half the resolution, see what happens then. Because this is quite a hefty thing to play back. To be honest, half the resolution, it's all right, you can do it, but it's still like 100% on the CPU. Let's see the timeline performance on half the resolution. Yeah, that's fine. Honestly, you can do even 4K C200 raw editing. I know it can't play back the full resolution, but hey, when you're editing, this bit over there isn't 4K anyway. So look at the timeline performance. It's absolutely fantastic. By the way, this was with a color grade as well. Whenever you see adjustment layer on top, that is means color grade as well. Red 4K raw, we're pressing play. And this is a CPU only codec as well. And look at that, we're playing back full resolution, red 4K raw, and I think this is even DCI 4K. But look at that, no problem. Timeline performance, it's insane. Now this one, I'm curious if this is able to play this back. This is Canon R5, H.265, 60 frames per second, 422, 10-bit footage. It's like ridiculous. So let's press play, let's see what happens. Okay. 
Here's the thing, the 10th generation Intel CPUs with the iGPU can't accelerate this codec uh, with uh, Premiere Pro. If you move on to like, I think even the 11th or the 12th gen, then the iGPU encoders or decoders of the video can play this back super, super smooth. Just wait till you see that. I, I couldn't believe it. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's amazing that you can do that so easy. This is not, well, it's very, very laggy. So if you're using this footage, there's no chance you're gonna play this back. Let's move this quarter of the resolution. Timeline performance is like non-existent. I'm moving around and wait for like a few seconds. Come on, there we go. It's, you can't edit R5 H.265 with this one. You're gonna have to get proxies for this, I'm sorry. Let's see if a red 5K is possible with this. Let's press play, see what happens. <laughs> Our CPU is just 100% utilized. Uh, no, absolutely not. It's absolute uh, slideshow festival over here. So we're not gonna do that. Let's see, 6K red row. Let's press play again. Nope, 100% utilized, even worse. So what I am curious though is the B raw, Blackmagic raw 6K. This is full resolution. Let's press play because that is quite easy codec to play back, and quite a lot of people, you know, use this codec footage. In fact, this is that same footage that were my main camera but it is dropping frames, constantly dropping frames and can't play that back. That's very, very interesting. Timeline performance, it's okay. Somewhere in the middle, it's not amazing, it's not quite bad, it's all right. Without the color grade, it's much better. But still, we're dropping frames and it, it's no good. Never mind two B-rolls on top of each other. Nah. So anything above 4K? Nah, I can't really do because the CPU isn't really powerful enough to utilize this. We're not gonna try Canon R5 8K because I know even the big chips can't edit this. Red 8K, we're just joking ourselves. So in essence, basically any 4K footage if you do mirrorless cameras from here, H.264 and 5, any of the chroma subsampling, it was doing a really, really good job. And honestly, it's like right up there with anything uh, that you can buy like a big workstation, which is amazing. And you get an RTX 3070. So if you're looking for something like right now for video editing and you can't find a GPU, you might get this system. It costs slightly more than the scalper prices RTX 3070, but you do get a full on RTX 3070 that you can later on get into a new system. So I'm impressed to be honest to see that 4K timeline playback looks looks pretty good. So let me know what you think in the comments below. If you want any other codecs to be included in this test, let me know in the comments below. Thanks guys for watching. Likes if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.